Okay, so today we are going to pick back up where we left off uh, graphing logs. Uh, we did exponentials. We touched on logs. We're going to continue our uh, master class in logarithms. So what we want to do is we're going to start by graphing both the exponential 3 to the x and the corresponding inverse log base 3 of x. And we want to do this on the same rectangular coordinate system. Now, we know that three points will always show up on an exponential graph. And that's 0, 1, uh, 1b, and negative 1, 1 over b. So for 3 to the x, what is b? 3, right? It's the base. So we're talking about just that number. So that's going to give us 0, 1, 1, 3, and negative 1, 1 third. Since log base 3 of x is the inverse of this, that means we're going to have the exact same points, only flipping the x and the y, right? That's the definition of an inverse. We flip the x and the y. So we get 1, 0, 3, 1, and negative 1, 1 third. 1 third, negative 1. Make sure you flip them. Now, since there was a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, what does that mean for our inverse? If we switch x and y, what does that become? It becomes x equals 0, and we get a vertical asymptote. Okay. So if we look at the same set of axes, If we graph these now, we're going to have the exponential 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, 1 third. So something like this with an asymptote at y equals 0. So it's going to hug the line and then come up something like this. All right, now if we go over and graph our log, we're going to have 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 1 third, negative 1. And we're going to have an asymptote at x equals 0, so we get this nice, try again. graph that looks like this. Now remember, one of the defining characteristics of inverses are when we graph them, they are mirror images of each other across that diagonal line. Does that look to be the case here? Yeah, they look like they're mirrored across that line, right? So we know we did it right. Anybody have any questions about graphing either the exponential or the log? How did you get the 0, 1, and the 1, 2, and the negative 1? These? Both of those and the 3. These we defined earlier when we did exponentials last time. We said that these three points will always show up on the graph because what happens if I put 1 in, I get B. If I put in negative 1, I get 1 over B. So B is 3, so that gives me these values. Over here, I just flip the X and the Y because they're inverses. So instead of 0, 1, I have 1, 0. Instead of 1, 3, I have 3, 1. Okay? So here are our characteristics of log. The domain of log is just all of the positive numbers from 0 to infinity. And the range is negative infinity to infinity. And we can tell by looking at this graph that that's going to be the case. Domain. What x is can I put in? Notice I have no x's over here on the negative side, right? So that means that I have only from 0 to infinity. Range, however, I have an arrow to an arrow, so that means that up and down I'm going to have infinity, in negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? Which also makes sense because if we flip 
x and y, that means these two things, the domains and range, will flip on. So the domain here is arrow to arrow, which is negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is zero to infinity. So it makes sense that those things are just flipped for exponentials and logs. We have this, they have to go through the point one zero, but not only do they go through the point one zero, they also go through the point B1 and one over B negative one. And we talked about when we graph the exponential, if B is a number greater than one, then that represents something called exponential growth. We know we're gonna be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Same deal here, if b is greater than 1, log base b of x is an increasing function, so it starts and goes up. However, if b is between 0 and 1, then that graph goes down to the right and is actually decay. Okay, so it's the same rules, b greater than 1 we have growth, b less than 1 we have decay. Okay, 1 is just exponential, 1 is logarithmic. Since the graph of fx is the inverse of the exponential, the exponential has a horizontal asymptote, the log is going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. All right, so these are your basic characteristics of a log. Now, since I know that the domain has to be positive, how do I find the domain of this logarithmic function? If I know that the argument when I say argument, I'm just talking about whatever I'm taking the log of. So the argument has to be positive. So much like when I did square roots, all I have to do is just set whatever that argument is greater than zero. Right? X minus five has to be greater than zero. It can't be zero, it can't be less than zero. So I add five to both sides and I get X has to be greater than five. So how would I write that in interval notation? What's the smallest number it can possibly be? No, there's a number less than six, bigger than five, right? Five and a half is bigger, than, is bigger than five, but less than six. So five is the smallest it can be with a parenthesis, not a bracket. Be careful when you do that, and that's a common thing that a lot of people do. Just because it's greater than five, there's a lot of numbers between five and six, okay? So we have to denote them by doing five and just putting a bracket, uh, parenthesis to say not five but everything bigger than five. And then what's the biggest number it can be? Infinity. Ooh, that's ugly. That ain't much better. <laughs> so an interval notation will be five to infinity. So now if I give you a list of things and say well what is the domain of this function? Not only do we have to look for fractions and zeros in the denominator, square roots with negatives, now we have to look for logs with negatives as well. So this is the third uh, domain restriction that's going to happen. Okay? And the last one we'll actually deal with. Now let me ask you a question. If this is the graph. Could y'all come up with this graph without somebody giving or without me giving it to you? Log base four of x minus five? I think you could, if you thought about it hard enough. We know, right off the bat, since it's a log, that it's going to have the point one zero. What's the base? Four, right, base four. So we know it's going to have four one and one fourth negative one. Right, those are those points that we say are going to always show up on a log. However, notice that I've got x minus 5. This is a number affecting the x, right? Is this going to be a left, right, or an up, down shift? It's a left, right shift, okay? And are we going right or left? We're going right. So this is going to be to the right, 5, which means I'm going to have to move all of those points to the right, 5. So I'm going to add 5 to each one of those x values. It's not moving up or down, so the y values don't change. So since we're moving 5, this becomes six zero, oh. This becomes uh, nine one, and this becomes five and a quarter, negative one. 
Does that make sense to everybody that since we're moving to the right, we're just adding that value to our x coordinate? So if I want to graph this, I graph 6, 0, I graph 9, 1, 5 and a quarter, negative 1. Now, since my original asymptote for this was at x equals 0, that's an x value, right? That means I'm going to have to add 5 to it. I get my new asymptote is where? At x equals 5. So we should be able to graph this. arrows. All right, any questions on that? All right, so a lot of times we see just log. Now, if you look at your calculator, everybody's got a button on it that just says log. What this means is it's base 10. We call it common log because we use it a lot, commonly used. So it's common log. Now, base 10 is our common log because we deal in base 10 more than we deal in just about anything else, right? We have 10 digits, you know, 10 fingers, which is why we live in a base 10 society, because uh, the first cave people were like, we'll go, I'll get, you know, whatever, the, whatever they said for numbers, you know, whatever, but they had 10 of them, so it made sense to make a system based on 10. If we'd have had 12 fingers, we'd live in a totally different world, right? Because we'd have 12 digits. It'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, whatever. So just a little bit of interesting nothing. So if you see one without a base, we haven't understood base 10. We call it common log. Here's an application using a common log. The percentage of adult height that a boy uh, who is x years old has attained can be modeled by the function f of x equals 29 plus 48.8 times the log of x plus 1. In this case, x is going to represent the boy's age as long as that age is between 5 and 15, and then the f of x represents his actual percentage of adult height. So if I want to know how tall a boy is, or what percentage of his adult height he's attained at age 10, since age is x, all I'm going to do is plug in 10 equals x. Okay, so here's my original equation. I'm looking for f of 10, so I'm going to plug in x equals 10. So I get 29 plus 48.8 log of 11, right, 10 plus 1. Now at this point, it's just calculator work. There's no other way to do this unless you've got a slide rule, which is basically just an old-timey calculator, but still just calculator work. So you plug that into your calculator, you get roughly 80. Okay? So that means that at age 10, a boy has attained about 80% of his adult height. I don't know how true that is. I don't know whether this is a, is a scientific fact or just something somebody made for the math book. Mathematically, we can figure it out, though. Now, does everybody understand what I did there? I mean, it's li literally these application problems tend to just be plug and chug. Just put the value in, put it in your calculator, and get an answer. Now, our general properties that we already went over are completely the same with common log, only I don't write the 10. So log base b of 1, log of 1, still equals 0. Right? The log of any base, the log any base of 1 is always going to be 0. Uh, if the base and the number are the same, the base and the argument are the same, then it's 1. So common log of 10 is just 1, because that's base 10. Here, b and b cancel out, not really cancel, mutually assuredly destroy each other. Same deal here. This is base 10. This is 10 to the power, so the bases cancel, leaving only the x. Same deal with this. 10 log base 10, leaving only the x. Okay? No? Yes? And these rules are going to be exactly the same when we do any base. Right? I could, I could change this to log base 3 of 1 equals 0, log base 3 of 3 equals 1, log base 3 of 3 to the x equals x, and log base 3 of, or 3 to the log base 3 of x equals x, right? It doesn't really matter what that base is. If they're all the same, you're going to get those rules. And you'll see that in a minute when we do natural log.
So what is natural log? We know what the natural number E is, and we talked about that last time. If we have that as our base, then that log becomes the natural log. Natural log is really handy. We use natural log almost 90 some odd percent of the time as opposed to common log or, or uh, any other base. Why natural log is not the only button on a calculator, I don't know. Because we, and when you get into physics and, and higher level math, uh, natural log is pretty much all you use. It just means base E, and we write it as LN. So if you look at your calculator, you'll see there's an LN button. A lot of times it's the second function of log, uh, but it is there. Now I know what you're thinking, LN, that doesn't, that's not natural, that should be NL, natural log, right? But it's actually French for logarithm natural, so that's where the LN comes from, because they're backwards there. They put their adjectives after their objects. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, most, most uh, European languages do that. Romance languages are derived from that kind of Latin feel of putting everything at the end. We are just jacked up in America, in England in general. So. so the natural log function gives you the same properties. Natural log of 1 is 0. Natural log of e, the bases are the same, so it's equal to 1. Natural log of e to the x, the bases are the same, so you get x. E to the natural log of x, you get x. These rules come into play pretty hard uh, in the last section when we talk about solving equations. So it's really important that we get these uh, basic properties down, right? I'll leave them up for a second. Every time she looks down, I move it. <laughs> All right. So here's an application problem using natural log. When the outside air temperature is somewhere between 72 and 96 degrees, then the temperature in an enclosed vehicle climbs by 43 degrees in the first full hour. This function, 13.4 natural log of x minus 11.6, actually models the temperature increase, f of x, in degrees Fahrenheit after x minutes. So. We want to use this function to find what the temperature increase is to the nearest degree after 30 minutes. So since x represents the number of minutes, what we're looking for is f of 30, right? So we start with f of x, and we change it to f of 30, and just plug in x equals 30. So 13.4 times the natural log of 30 minus 11.6. Once again, it's just calculator work. Just plug it in, you get an answer. You round it to the nearest whole degree, you get 34 degrees. So if you've got a 95 degree ambient temperature outside. You lock your door, walk away, come back in a half an hour, you're looking at 129 degrees in your car. I don't know how true that is, but it sounds about right. Yeah, it can, yeah. And whether you've got a nice shade, you know. Yeah. So, that's how we do it, plug and chug. Any questions on what logs are, how they tie into exponentials, how to graph them, how to plug them into your calculator, anything like that? All right, so we are going to transition over into properties of logs. Yes, sir. Yeah, we just finished 3.2. We're going to start 3.3 now. And this is all we're going to do today, 3.3. We'll do 3.4 on Monday, do review on Wednesday, and the test will be due the following Monday. Monday week. It'll open next Wednesday. Till the following Monday, yeah. You'll have till Tuesday to have all the homework done because Wednesday will be review, so we try to get it done the day before review. Okay. All right. So in this section, we're going to talk about three rules, product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. We want to be able to expand the logarithmic expressions and condense them, and we're going to use these three rules to do that. And the last thing is change of base property, which comes in super handy because 
as you know, we just talked, there's only two log buttons on your calculator, common log and natural log. So what happens if you want to find log base 5 of 83? Eh, you're going to use change of base formula. Okay. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Product rule. What we're going to do is we're going to let B, M, and N be positive real numbers with our base not equal to 1. We know that it can't be equal to 1. If I have two positive factors, I can rewrite any log as the sum of those two factors, as the log of the sum of t those two factors. The sum of the log of those two factors, surely one of those is right. Now, what does this mean? Let's see what I'm talking about. What if I've got a uh, log of 21? Can I write 21 as two numbers multiplied together? I could write that as log of 3 times 7. Now, if I can write the argument as a product, I can rewrite the entire thing as a sum. Okay? Now, this is really not practical in this case because if I can figure out what log 3 and log 7 are, well, why can't I just figure out what log of 21 is, right? I could use my calculator. But this is just to show you how the principle works. More often than not, you see it more along the lines of natural log of 2x, where we're separating it into a constant and a variable log. Now, what if you're multiplying more than two things together? What if I had natural log of 2xyz? What is what? L, L and X. Right, this is 2 times X, so I can separate it into 2 and X. So if we're multiplying more than two things together, all we're going to do is add each one of the factors separately. So this becomes natural log of 2 plus natural log of X plus natural log of Y plus natural log of Z. So when we multiply things together, that changes over to addition. And it doesn't matter how many of them we do, we add them all. Now, if you can't remember this rule, uh, what we want to equate it to is multiplication uh, of exponents. What if I take x squared times x squared? What do I get? How'd you do that? You added the exponents together, right? Multiplication is addition. Okay. Just that simple. Multiplication is addition anyway. Have you ever thought of that? There's really multiplication doesn't really exist. Either. There's no such thing as all there is is addition. There's no such thing as subtraction because subtraction is just the addition of a negative number. There's no such thing as multiplication because it's just adding things over and over and over again. Division is just the uh, multiplication of reciprocals. But since we know multiplication doesn't exist, multiplication of reciprocals can't exist. So all there is is addition. No, <laughs> math is just addition. You're just adding a bunch of stuff together. It's all you do in math. Because if you say, what is 3 times 7? Well, that's just 7 plus 7 plus 7, right? Three times. It's just addition. I swear to you, I'm not lying. There's no such thing as multiplication, division, or subtraction. They're just made up constructs to make math a little easier to deal with. A little easier. OK? Do what? Well. <laughs> you can do you can do logs by hand. They are long, arduous, tedious, every word you can think of that means you don't want to do it. But yeah, it can be done. I've done I did one day I decided to find like the natural log of seventeen, something like that. I worked on one of the boards in the lab for about forty five minutes before I just quit. I'm just like, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. Because I was just doing it for fun, and it was just tedious. 
Well, yeah, it, it, that first half hour is just like rocking it out. I'm going to do this. But then I got to the end of the board, and I'm like, I'm still not done. I quit. I don't want to erase anything and start over because then it looks stupid because you're like, what does this mean? Well, you started in the middle. I'm sorry. If I can't do it, if it takes more than one board, I get, I get frustrated with it. See, now, ideally, I would just have just boards everywhere, you know. That would be my, my dream is just to have a room of boards. You know, have, has anybody taken uh, or been over to the uh, Alabama Center for the Arts where the uh, fine arts classes and stuff are at, where the new box is at and all that? They've got rooms over there that have uh, dry erase paint on the wall. So you just, you have no boards, you just write on the wall. It's fascinating. I'm like, yes, can I get one of those? <laughs> I want them to paint my, my office in that. So they're not going to, though. All right. So we got log base 6 of 7 times 11. How can I rewrite that? Now, it's an 11. It's just part of it's in the board, or, or part of it's in the square. It's where they didn't translate the multiplication symbol properly. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Now, for some reason, the transition to the latest version of PowerPoint, it can't recognize certain symbols, and it just throws a box in there. A multiplication symbol. Seven times 11. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. Well, let me do it up here. Log of seven. Can I write 7 as something times something? 7 times 1. Considering 3.5 times 2, that's true. Looking at 7 uh, times 1, can I rewrite that now as log 7 plus log 1? But what's log 1? It's 0, right? So, yeah, th who cares, right? I just wanted you to see that you could do it. There's no reason to. You just get log 7 equals log 7. All right, what about log of 100x? Log 100 equals log x plus log x. What's log of 100? You remember how to do this? What's the base? 10. 10 to what power equals 100? Can't be one. Yeah, ten to the second power equals one hundred, so that's just two. Yes, he. I saw your hand. <laughs> Correct. We call that common log. Right. Because I know ten to the second power equals one hundred, therefore it's two. All right. So, so multiplication is always understood by putting multiple plus sign. Mm -hmm. sign. We do multiplication turns into addition. Now we're going to do division. So what's x to the fourth divided by x squared? X to the fourth divided by x squared? Oh, yeah. X squared, right? Because you subtract. Bam, bam, bam. Same rule. Okay. Now we're saying any log of a quotient can be rewritten as subtraction. Once again, this is all abstract because there's no such thing as division. So, And what's cool is I can actually show you how to do this with only addition once we do, once we do the uh, power rule. But anyway. <laughs> or not. Maybe not. So for example log of 25 over x, what's that going to be? Yes. No, because this is not 2. 10 to what power is 25? 
That is, but this is not base 5. It's base 10. That would only be true if this were log base 5 of 25. Because it doesn't have a number. If it doesn't have a number, it's that understood 10 that we call common log. All right, so what about log base 8 of 23 divided by x? Log base 8 of 23 minus log base 8 of x. Natural log of e to the fifth divided by 11. Right, natural log of e to the fifth minus natural log of 11. Well, what's natural log of e to the fifth? What's the base of natural log? E, right? What's the base of e to the fifth? Do they not destroy each other? Yeah, leaves you with just five, so that just becomes five minus natural log of eleven. Yes, sir. No, I wish I did. I mean, you can always do, uh, you know, you can do like the L for length, where you put a loop in it. But, and a lot of people do write L in cursive, so they do L in. But I never write in cursive, so. I think it should be taught, but I don't think everyone should have to be using it. Cause. Yeah, those L's look like ones. One in, one in, one one. Or maybe it's Linel. Linel. Five minus Lionel. There you go. Which is just one in, right? Which is an in. No, it's 11 in. 11 in. But there's no such thing as multiplication. All right. Now we're going to use something called the power rule. And the power rule is really just a derivation directly from the product rule. And what that says is if we have the log of a number to a power, we can bring the power out front. So log base b of m to the p, we bring the p out front, we just have p log base b of m. What does this mean? Say I've got log of x to the 8th power. I'm just going to bring the 8 out front. 8 log x. Now, why is this true? What does x to the 8th mean? It means x times 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 x, right? That's products, right? So can I rewrite that as addition? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So I have eight logs. What is that equal to? Eight logs, <laughs> right? So that's why the power rule works, because it's just a straight example of the product rule. So now we know we can just bring an exponent out front. All right? That being said, let's go back to the quotient rule. No. Say we've got natural log of x over 8. Could I rewrite that as natural log of x 8 to the negative 1 by bringing the 8 to the top and turning it into a negative exponent? So now I can rewrite this as natural log of x plus natural log of 8 to the negative 1. But I can just bring the negative 1 out front. That's not necessary. Oh, what? Where's that? What? Did you get that? Yes. <laughs> this is it. I just sit around and do math. So how do you get from From here to here? Yeah. 1 over 8 is 8 to the negative first power. We just take it from the denominator, bring it to the numerator, and give it a negative exponent. So it's just something you can do. Yes, ma'am.
the argument itself can't be negative. Like here, x over 8 can't be negative. Therefore, my domain would tell me that x can't be negative, since 8 always is positive. That's the rule we just did, power rule. It tells us that we can pull the exponent out front. Doesn't matter what it is, whether it's positive or negative, I can still do it. Yep, because the negative that comes out front turns that positive into negative, and you get that. Yep. Now, is this practical to do it this way? Of course not. That's why we did the quotient rule. We created division so that we could make multiplication a little easier. Okay? Yes? All right. So how would I expand this? log base 6 of 3 to the n. How would I rewrite this using power rule? I just bring the exponent out front, right? I get 9 log base 6 of 3. Now it's important to recognize that this rule only applies if the exponent is on the argument, okay? That's it. That's all I can do. Do you see the difference between this and this? Here, the 9 is only on the argument, right? 3 to the 9th is the argument. Here, the 9 is on the entire function. We cannot use the power rule for this. Oh, what, that's not an arrow. No. It just equals that times itself nine times. Which we have no rule for the product of logs. We can't change it into anything, so it just stays the way it is. Yeah, for, for that, you're not going to be able to do anything to it. If I tell you to do something to this, you say, And that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, if that was <laughs> be a mountain, you got smiley face, frowny face, uh, straight face, and oh y'all, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> let me set my pen down for a second. So my daughter comes home yesterday with uh, some work from uh, kindergarten, and it's a sheet with the letter I, and it says circle all the things that start with an I, and or color all the the things that start with an I. So there's a dude going. And that's apparently itch. So she, she colored that. There's an igloo. She colored that. Uh, there was like, I don't even know what it was. It was like a hammer or something. She marked that out. She didn't color it. And then there were two little flying bugs that looked kind of like mosquitoes. And she marked them out. Well, the teacher comes back and gives her a little straight face. So they can either get a smiley face, frowny face, or a straight face. She got a little straight face. And the teacher circled the bugs and wrote insects. So my daughter, she comes to me. She's like, I was like, why did you get a straight face? Why did you not color the insects? She said, Daddy, they're not insects. Insects have six legs. These only have four. <laughs> and I'm like, who told you this? She's like, Miss Glanton told us that. It's like, well, Miss Glanton is the one that told you they were insects. She's like, everybody else was wrong. I'm right. They're not insects. <laughs> so I wrote a note on a sticky note and put it on there. And I was like, Mrs. Glanton, Lyra feels that she was unjustly given a straight face on this assignment because the bugs that are in question only have four legs and not six. And as we all know, insects have six legs. So we'll see what <laughs> Ms. Glanton has to say. I just thought that was fascinating that my five-year-old is like arguing with me. I'll let you know what she says because she, she's 100% right. You know, so I'm like, and then I got to looking at it and I'm like, first off, this is scratching. It does, it's not itch. You can't really draw an itch. Can you color it? What color is itch? Red and fiery? I don't know. But so I was like, I don't, I don't like this sheet at all. I just throw it out. I'm, but because we had we had told her that she had gotten a uh, she had gotten a frowny face on one thing she was supposed to write I am something I don't know what it was but she wrote it atrociously and it was just horrible <laughs> so the teacher was like please write neatly and she got a frowny face so if she gets a frowny face she doesn't get dessert so we're like you're not getting dessert she's like Dad I want dessert I was like you can't have dessert and then she comes up with this insect thing and Melissa's my wife's like she deserves something for that and I'm like fair enough she got ice cream so. <laughs> 
She may have been uh, counted off by the teacher, but she got ice cream. Natural log of cube root of x. Is the cube root of x got an exponent in it? It could if we rewrite it as x to the one-third, right? So remember, it's, it's key to remember that these roots can always be written as exponents that are fractions. So a cube root is one-third, a fourth root is one-fourth, a 37th root is one over 37, right? So from this point, what do we do? Put the one-third out front. That's it. The top problem did. I pulled the 9 out front. What it didn't work was if I had that as log base 6 of 3 all to the ninth power. That doesn't work. That's when you get the frowny face. Yes? No, <laughs> not at all. All right, what about log of x plus 4? squared. Is it? What's the square on? Is the square on just the argument or is the square on the whole thing? It's only on the argument, right? So we can pull it out front. <laughs> all right, so here are all the properties written out. Product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. We have no frowny face rule. <laughs> I guess we could do. Frowny rule. I like this class. You are fun. <laughs> I, I, we can all go. I'm not paying for y'all, but we'll have. To, let's see. I think we've got like an extra day there at the end that we, we, you know we've got like two review days. We may just have one day at Olive Garden. You can sit there. You know, I, I've been, I've been, I've taken a group, I've taken a group to Olive Garden, and some people not order anything but still eat breadsticks. Yeah. No, no. Can't get extra credit. The extra credit is that you got to go to Olive Garden and not come to math class. That's the extra credit. <laughs> All right. There you go. The more coupons we got, the better off everybody's going to be, right? Yes. <laughs> no, we can't. Oh, you're taking me out. You're showing me a good time. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. That's how I get fired. It's like, oh yeah, I gave the whole class A's because they took me to the movies. <laughs> Highly, yes. <laughs> Unethical, yes. Man, I love putt putt. I'm no good at it, but I love it. Actually, you know, I don't know if I told you I went golfing, or, you know, last week, and I actually putted really well for the first time in the history of ever, usually I'm like a triple putter all the time. It's like triple putt, triple putt, triple putt. And I was just like draining them from like 60 feet. I mean, when I, I didn't drain the 60 foot one. I had one that was, it literally was about six, but I, I wound up with about, maybe about seven inches away from the cup. And I was like, usually that far, I'm either nowhere near, because I just barely tapped it, or I've hit it so hard it's over in the next hole, you know. <laughs> That's gener generally my MO. And I was chipping really well. I had a, a really good short game. I don't know what it was. But then again, like I said, I was driving horribly. Every time I tried to drive with my uh, woods, I would top it or I would just shank it just straight off to the side. So I switched over to doing a three iron and was at least getting, you know, 150 yards, you know, which on a par five will kill you if all you're doing is just 100 yards at a time, you know, but that's all right. So let's use logarithmic properties to express this uh, or to expand it out as much as possible. So we have multiple things being uh, multiplied together, right? So, first thing we want to do is rewrite everything so that they have exponents. We don't want to leave anything as a radical, so I'm going to rewrite it as log base b of x to the fourth y to the one third. Now, this is a product. 
I can't use my power rule yet because they don't have the same exponent. I can't pull one common exponent out because I don't have a common exponent. But since it is a product, I can rewrite it as the sum of those two things. Now each one independently has its own power rule. Pull the four out of the first one, the one third out of the second one. So I get four log base b of x plus one third log base b of y. Now we talked about multiplying common things together. You know, we did the log of 2xyz. We just, since there's all multiplication, we just add all of them together. What if you had log of 2 over xyz? We can extrapolate the same kind of rule. Anything in the top of a fraction is going to be added. Anything on the bottom is going to be subtracted because that's the rule. Multiplication means addition, division means subtraction. So anything on the top is going to be added and anything on the bottom oops, two X, so it would look like that. Log base or log two minus log X minus log Y minus log Z. Does that make sense? Numerator is addition, denominator is subtraction. And this is going to come into play because I've got this problem now. Log base 5 of root x over 25y cubed. Now, this is a multi-step problem on a bunch of levels. So we're going to start by rewriting it. x to the 1 half over 25y cubed. Now I'm going to use my power or my product and quotient rules to say anything in the numerator is going to be added, anything in the denominator is going to be subtracted. So that's log base 5 of x to the 1 half minus log base 5 of 25 minus log base 5 of y cubed. All right, so what's the last thing I need to do? That, that actually is the last thing I need to do, but what's the thing I do before that? Yeah, use the power rule to bring the one half out front and bring the three out front. And now, absolutely, that's going to be our last step is if we can simplify any of the logs, we need to simplify them. Since X and Y are both variables, I can't do anything with those, but I do notice that 5 squared is 25, so I can rewrite minus 2 minus 3 log base 5 of y. Yes, sir? Because log base 5 of 25, 5 to what power is 25? Two. Definition of log. And the minus sign was already there, so I just brought it down. All right. So same rules for uh, expanding and condensing. We just do it in the opposite direction. Okay. So since this is addition, what rule deals with addition? The product rule. So I can rewrite this since I've got log of the same bases. If they're the same base, we can do this. So log base 10 of 25 plus log base 4, or log base 10 of 4 becomes log base 10 of 25 times 4, which is 100. And log of 100 is 2. 10 to what power is 100? 10 to the second power is 100. All right. What about log of 7x plus 6 minus log of x? Since we're subtracting, 
same bases, what rule are we going to use? The quotient rule, right. Remember, addition is product, subtraction is quotient. So since this is the positive one, it goes in the numerator. Since this is the negative one, it goes in the denominator. You just have log of 7x plus 6 over x. Now, the bad one. 2 natural log of x plus 1 third natural log of x plus 5. They have the same base, but they have different numbers in front of them. I can't combine them. I can't do anything with it. So how do I get rid of the numbers on the front? Right. We're going to do the backwards of the, of the power rule, right? So instead of being 2 ln x, we get natural log of x squared. Instead of 1 third natural log of x plus 5, we get natural log of x plus 5 to the 1 third. Just bring those constants out front and turn them into exponents. Now, since we're adding two bases that are the same, what rule are we going to use? For at, no, product rule. So addition is product, so we just multiply the two together. Now, does anybody see an issue with this? You can. But I have a, a different issue with the way this is written. And I'll tell you, it's kind of like saying, let me give you all a good example. Okay, here, I've got 2 plus x times x plus 3. Now, does this mean that only the x is times the 2 plus x, or am I talking about the entire x plus 3 being times that, right? Parentheses matter, because that's two totally different things, the way that it's written. So I submit that this should all be in parentheses so that I recognize that I'm not just taking the natural log of x squared and then multiplying it times this. I'm actually taking the natural log of this entire thing. So putting your entire argument in parentheses or brackets is really important because that way we know exactly what the argument is. Yes. Now, when you do this on the computer, most of the time you're going to type in natural log and it'll open like a block up and you just put it over, you write the argument in it. It's not going to be a big deal. They're, they're going to give you credit for it as long as you've got the, the thing in the block. But for me, putting it in parentheses is really important so that you recognize exactly what the argument is at a glance. So the computer can't write either way? No, the computer can't write either way. Okay. And then, of course, the last step, turn it back into a cube root. No, you tend to use brackets when you already have parentheses to just break up the monotony of a bunch of parentheses. Well, it's not that it's important. It's just convention tells us we don't leave. Well, we just, it's not why, the reason I did is just because t generally convention says we don't leave exponents as, as fractions. And if we can get rid of them, we do. What if you had just a little curiosity? Does, ever, does anybody know how to deal with that? X plus five to the two thirds. How would you write that without using an exponent or without using an exponent? Mm -hmm. So remember, yes. Well, we know the cube root would just be to the one-third power. Would this say change the two-thirds root? No. No, that would be nice if we could just say the two-thirds root. No, what this means is anytime we have a fraction, the bottom number is the root, but the top number is still an exponent. So the way you would write that is x plus 5 
squared cube root. Because what happens? Then that's x plus 5 squared to the 1 third power. 2 times 1 third gives us 2 thirds. Because remember, when you take an exponent to an exponent, you multiply them together. Not important for this. I don't think that's going to pop up at all in this section at all, but I just wanted to throw that out there so you see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could rewrite this as this. Yep. All right, last thing we're going to do, change of base property. For any log, we can rewrite it. If it's base B, we can rewrite it as log base A of whatever the argument is divided by log base A of whatever the base was. So what this means log base 3 of 22. I can rewrite that as log base 7 of 22 divided by log base 7 of 3. Or I could write it as log base 5 of 22 divided by log base 5 of 3. Doesn't matter. As long as these bases are the same, this is the argument and this is the original base, we should still get the same answer what would be the more advantageous base to use? What bases do I have on my calculator? I got base 10, so log of 22 over log of 3. What else do I have? I got natural log 2. Any of these give you the same answer. Only two of them can we check, okay? So let's do a problem. Let's say log base 7 of 2506. So if we take the log of the argument divided by the log of the base. So we're looking at either common log of 2506 divided by common log of 7 or natural log of 2506 divided by natural log of 7. So everybody on, over here on the right-hand side, if you've got a calculator, I want you to do the top problem. I want you to do common log of 2506 divided by common log of 7. And tell me what that answer is. Everybody over here on the left, if you've got a calculator, do common log or uh, natural log of 2506 divided by natural log of 7. And we'll see what we get. All right, right side, anybody got it? Give me out uh, two decimals. 4.02. All right, left side, 4.02. Oh, hi. It better be the exact same thing regardless. So you could have just not done the work over here and just said same, 4.02. That's what I got. Yep. <laughs> so this comes into play if we need to get an actual decimal answer for something. If and you may this will be in your homework. They'll say, What is log base seven of twenty five oh six? Give me an answer. And to do that you have to use change of base formula, plug it in, you get four point oh two. All right? Oh, you're doing it wrong there. Which kind of calculator you got? Okay, so you're going to have to do 2506 and log. And then divide. Oh, no, you're. Oh, cancel that. Yeah, do it. Log 2506. Close your parentheses. Right. And then divided by log 7. Close your parentheses. Equal. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times it's a parentheses issue. All right, anybody have any questions? Fantastic. Make sure you are working in your homework. Make sure if you've got any questions, you bring it next class. Make sure if you haven't signed up for a meeting, you go ahead and get that signed up. Make sure that if you signed up for a meeting that you show up for it. If you missed one already, if anybody, I don't know if anybody in here signed up and missed one, uh, but if you did, just sign up for another one. Make sure you get it done.